This is a Higgins Weight Drive prototype and I've built it to test if I can play tighter music on my marble machine. Even though I built a prototype with limited amount of tools and mostly by hand, it performed amazingly well in its first test. <laughs> played 66 times tighter music compared to the large metal prototype I built in Germany. Earlier I also made a Higgins prototype in Lego just to test the functionality, but I needed a larger flywheel to do more serious tests, so I needed to make this wooden one. The Marble Machine X could play pretty tight music, but generally not tight enough and its performance was very uneven. For my new marble machine, I want the performance to be reliable, and playing tight music is a non-negotiable design requirement. And that's why I'm so happy, because the performance of the Higgin chain drive is a total breakthrough for the entire project. This amazing solution was a missing piece to the marble machine puzzle, and now that I've found it, I have a renewed belief in the project. But even though the results of the first test were great, I saw two things in the data that I wanted to try to improve. Firstly, I wanted to add this crank here, so I can input power in a continuous rotary motion rather than pumping the ratchet in a pump-like motion like I did before. The crank is using these nice mitre gears to transfer the rotation in a 90 degree angle. And the reason for adding the crank is that I saw this weird pattern in the BPM graph with these rolling hills. It looked like the tempo was going up and down in a repeated pattern. And my question question is perhaps this pattern comes from the periodic power input from the pumping motion. And by the way, here the BPM graph is super zoomed in. The scale is only 2 BPM different. So if I zoom out to 10 BPM, it looks like this. 40 looks like this. And 200 BPM, it looks completely flat like this. So generally, the machine is playing really tight. It just looks much worse when we zoom in really close. The second thing I wanted to correct was tempo drift over longer time. As you can see here, the tempo is slowly rising throughout the test with the old design. And in the old design, I used this very professional air governor taped on to the flywheel shaft. So the governor rotated exactly the same speed as the flywheel and it was pretty slow. An air governor adds mechanical resistance by rotating flaps through the air, and it's a mechanical device used in almost all the music instruments at the Secrets Music Cabinet Museum. And when I studied the air governors on these amazing machines, I saw that all of them was geared up to spin really fast. So fast that it just becomes a blur to the eye. All so the air governor breaks the machine, and Lucas can manually add and remove more friction. Now we completely stopped. So that's how the air brake looks when we completely stopped. You can hear how yeah. the music stopped. I wanted to try a geared up air governor to see if it could handle the tempo drift over time better. So I made a lot of tests to see how these changes affect the performance of the prototype. But before going into those results, I want to show you some highlights from the building process of the prototype. I made the design in CAD and transferred the design with pen and ruler manually to the wood. It was really fun drawing by hand actually. I have moved to a new city again and close to where I live now I can borrow this workshop which is super nice and in the workshop I cut out shapes by hand and next I started on the flywheel and I need to drill a super straight hole for the axle through the middle of the flywheel so I used a drill press to drill through this block of plywood. I could then drill through the same block in the middle of my MDF board and the hole comes out much straighter compared to doing it entirely by eye. I could then use the drill as a pivot point and attach a jigsaw to a piece of wood and saw a circle that felt absolutely perfect. This worked uh, like a charm. Very, very satisfying. I drilled through the 3D printed hubs for the bolt holes and could then use the center pivot to draw a circle for screw holes and then use the bolt holes to draw the hole locations along the rim very accurately. So that was all the parts done and putting it all together I had a really nice looking flywheel without using CNC and it was super fun actually figuring this process out without CNC. Then I 3D printed a bunch of parts but the most fun was creating these hubs for the bike gears. 
I took a picture of the gears with a ruler in the shot. Then I can calibrate the picture in Fusion 360 using the ruler to adjust the scale correctly. Then I could trace the internal shape of the bike gears and print the parts. I pressed a bearing into the part and the gear clicked in place perfectly first try. Also very satisfying. And by the way, shout out to my new friends at Bikester, bike store in Sikla, Stockholm, Sweden. I went in there to buy some bike gears for the project and several of the staff happened to follow the Marble Machine series. So their mechanic went looking for some used old gears in the scrap bin that they donated to the project. So it was super awesome. And thanks to Bikester for helping with the Marble Machine. This is the final result and this prototype is one of my favorite things I've ever built, no exaggeration. Okay, so we're soon ready to look at how the new changes affected the performance of the prototype. But before we go into that, I want to show you exactly how this thing works. So here's how it works. In the middle, we have the ratchet wheel, which is the power input that lifts up the big weight. The big weight is driving the driven wheel. And then the chain moves on to an idler wheel, which is just to move the chain out of the way. And then it goes down to this small counterweight. And here is the very important bit. Let's say the weight weighs 10 kilos, but it is hanging from two chains. So it will actually pull only half its weight, five kilo on both sides. So when the ratchet wheel is still and the weight is falling, the weight will pull the driven wheel with five kilo force. But as soon as we rotate the ratchet wheel and we lift the weight up, the extra force we're using to lift the left side translates to extra down pulling force on the right side. I don't have the exact numbers here and it also depends on how fast we are lifting the weight. But I think it has a lot to do with Newton's second law of motion that states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to its mass. And I guess these are the formulas we would use to actually calculate what's happening here. And I think it's actually super simple to calculate this. But everything we actually need to understand today is that when we are actively moving the weight upwards on the left side, we are pulling harder down on the right side, giving the flywheel more power input. So playing tight music with a Hagen chain drive is all about finding that magical balance. By rotating the ratchet at exactly the speed that will make the weight hover in midair, we will always input the same amount of energy into the system and the music will be tight. So we can actually use the height of the weight as a visual clue to see if we're inputting correct amount of energy into the system. So when I'm doing the test, I'm looking at my suitcase filled with metal and trying to keep it at exact same height from the floor. And to go even deeper into the dynamics of this system, I noticed something interesting during the tests. The tempo kept on accelerating for a very long time before reaching a plateau and finding that balance. And it actually makes sense because the faster the flywheel is spinning, the faster the weight is falling, the faster I need to lift the weight to make it hover in midair. And therefore, the faster I lift the weight, the faster the flywheel will be spinning. And it becomes this virtuous cycle that just keeps on accelerating the system forever. And that is exactly why a system like this absolutely needs some form of controllable resistance like a governor to counteract this virtuous cycle of acceleration and find a balanced tempo. So to summarize, the force from the weight is not constant. It becomes heavier when we lift it. And by finding the balance when it's standing still in the air, the music will be tight. And it is really easy to make a big mistake and think of the weight as the force driving the machine. But it is not. It is the ratchet wheel and the force that I put into the system manually that is the power force, the power input. The weight is only filtering my input force through gravity. So we are actually tapping into the constant force of gravity and using that to quantize our power input to play tight music. To play different music tempos with the Marm machine, we will use a gearbox after the Huygen weight drive. So the Huygen weight drive will be configured to always rotate at the same exact speed, which makes everything so much simpler. It means that we can have an operating speed that the system can be fine tuned to, and that the moment of inertia of the flywheel will always be constant. This means that we do not care really about what exact RPM we are rotating at at all. The only thing that matters is how constant our RPM value is. 
Furthermore, to separate the rotation speed of the flywheel from the music tempo is important anyway, because as we have shown in the metal prototype from Germany, higher moment of inertia equals tighter music, which means that if the flywheel and music tempo was intertwined, the slower songs would be playing less tight than the faster ones. And of course we can't have that. So separating power input and flywheel rotation from music tempo is a form from function design decision. Okay, that was all theory needed, but this is super important stuff that the prototype has taught me. Okay, let's see if the crank and the upgraded air governor can improve the results. For each test, I turn the machine between 10 and 15 minutes to get really good test data. Here is test one. With the faster air governor, the tempo of test 1 was only 64 BPM. So I shortened the fins for test 2 and the tempo increased to 73 BPM. But I want to fly wheel even faster, so I shortened the fins again and in test 3 it played 103 BPM. This is a good illustration of how the governor works. The less resistance it puts into the system, the higher the balanced tempo becomes. For test four, I wanted it much faster, so I took off a lot, but then the center of the 3D printed miter gear broke, so I couldn't use the crank anymore and had to manually pull on the chain with my hands. Pulling hard on the chain for 10 minutes straight was pretty exhausting on the hand muscles, but luckily I am bouldering from time to time nowadays, so it went all right. Bouldering is so much fun, and if you want to see more bouldering, check out the video from the Trainers YouTube channel, link in the description. Anyway, I think I removed a bit much from the governor fins here, and the tempo increased all the way to 213 BPM. But at these speeds, the timing is excellent. 0.12 milliseconds standard deviation over 100 transients is super tight. And by removing even more resistance from the air governor, I could increase the tempo which improved the result to 0.04 milliseconds in test 7. Crazy tight. So the continuous method of adding power into the system with the crank or pulling on the chain seemed to have actually removed the rolling hills we had from the pumping motion on the previous test. And this is a great success, but the tempo drift haven't been solved by the new air governor. As you can see, the tempo still moves around over time slowly. A stronger flywheel will make these movements much slower and the music tighter, but I wanted to see if I can reduce the tempo drift by improving the air governor. The gear ratio I used was 1 to 2, with the pulleys the gear ratio is 1 to 4, and the air governor spins 4 times when the flywheel spins 1. And my thinking here is that a faster air governor will add resistance more exponentially, and therefore be more precise. As I spin the machine up here, you can see how the air governor becomes a total blur, which is exactly how the air governors at Lucas Museum look. So that's great, but what I found out here is that the power belt I used here is less efficient compared to the gears, and the high gear ratio made the whole prototype play too slow. So test eight wasn't really great. And I also got tired of sitting on the ground pulling the chain. So I took some time to print a new improved mitre gear so I could put back the crank. And then I also removed the belt pulleys and put new spur gears in with one to three gear ratio instead. So for test 10, it was really nice to be able to use the crank again, but the air governor wasn't strong enough to stop the acceleration. As you can see, we just kept on accelerating slowly for 10 minutes straight. So I added longer fins to the governor for test 11. Test 11 was too slow, 51 BPM. So I reduced the fins for test 12 and it resulted in 96 BPM. And after removing even more of the fins, test 13 was 171 BPM.
I reduced the governor further and test 14 was 277 BPM. Nice and fast with a lot of moment of inertia in the flywheel and the precision result was back. 0.05 milliseconds over 100 transients and 0.14 milliseconds over 300 transients, which is exactly the same result I had on the first time I tested the chain drive. So it is still 66 times tighter compared to the prototype I built in Germany, but it also means that I haven't managed to solve the tempo drift issue. One interesting aspect is that I think that some of the acceleration of the tempo over time was affected by the grease in the 10 bearings loosening up. So just like the air governor adds friction to the system, the bearings also add friction into the system, affecting the balanced tempo. So when the friction from the bearing reduces, the speed of the BPM goes up. One obvious way to solve this is to increase the moment of inertia in the flywheel. The flywheel in Germany was 200 times stronger than the flywheel I'm using here. And on the real machine, I know for sure that a huge, super strong flywheel will make everything better. There will still be temperature changes in the grease of the bearings, but a stronger flywheel will care less about the difference in friction from the bearings. It will care and it will be affected but much less. And caring less means tighter music in this case. Okay, so I can improve by increasing the moment of energy of the flywheel and by fixing the temperature of the grease in the bearings, but to improve even further than that, I will need to look into building a better governor. And the next step will be to look into using a flyable governor just like this to see if it can stabilize the tempo better than the air governor can. But that's for another time. And all in all, this design is just absolutely awesome. And it is going to be the foundation for the marble machine. I'm really happy about it. If you made it all the way here, you're probably interested to hear some behind the scenes. I haven't been able to work for the past seven weeks due to relatives being severely ill. And I have also during this period moved cities once again. I've been moving around so much the past years and it has really affected my productivity. So I haven't had any stability in my day-to-day -day work life and I'm working on creating a better stable work environment so I can push the marble machine progress faster from here on. Thanks to the Higgin drive, I do see a path to a functioning machine that could play tight music extremely well. So I'm really happy about that and I want to wish you good luck with everything you are doing and see you on the next one.